A while ago I did a video on setting up SnapRaid and on drive pool in Windows. So I'm going to be doing a similar thing in Linux. And I guess why would you use this? And it's comparable to Unraid, but it's free. Fairly comparable in many ways. It's um, pretty flexible when it comes to storage. You can mix any size of drives. If they happen to fail, you can put them in any other system. If you want your data, you can just take your drives and put them in any system that supports mounting Linux drives and you're fine. You can mix different file formats, you can add drives that already have data. It's pretty flexible. So, I'd say that's a pretty good start. And I'm going to be starting this from the perspective of if you have a blank computer to do it. And this is the Debian installer put on a USB stick. Um, many ways to do that. General exit is about this on Windows for most people. And I'm just going to be going through the procedure. Now, if you already have a Linux computer, you can do this pretty easily um, as well. Just skip forward to the part where I already have Linux installed. This is going to be just a basic Linux install here. Um, you don't need a GUI. A GUI can run on top, but pretty much every single command here is going to be a terminal command. Let's take a look at what I recommend for hardware. For CPU, anything modern works. This is a Core 2 Duo board, and this is an old Core 2 Duo based Pentium. They'll work fine. You don't need much CPU to do it. It'll make your sync slightly slower, but you're not spending too much time doing that. Memory-wise, plain Debian uses very little memory. Half a gig will be fine here. Anything more is used as a cache, so it will speed it up a little bit, but no reason to get it extra if you're just using it on the file server. If you want to run VMs and stuff on it as well, more storage is nice to have. Motherboard-wise, uh, make sure it can fit all you want. So, for example, this board has six SATA ports on it which is a nice to have feature. Uh, one more thing to note is network ports, make sure they work in Linux. Some boards can be very picky about this, but just take note of that. Other than that, it should work fine as long as it works reasonably with Linux here. Um, otherwise, I do have a, a Windows guide for it. Next thing is storage. So this is a great setup for when you have mixed drive configs. So for example, um, you're going to have a 500 gig, I think this is another 500, a 200, 280. Pretty mixed configuration, most RAID arrays don't like this. So what it does here is it's essentially kind of like a RAID 4. So this is going to be a um, parity drive here, and then everything else is going to hold data, and Snap is going to push it all onto the parity every once in a while when you manually tell it to do. The other advantage is you can just take these drives out and read whatever data you want off of them, which is always a nice thing. So, some of the options in Debian include picking your host name, I'm just going to call it Snap right here, domain name, leave it as default, if your network has one, it'll put it in. Root password, I don't normally put this in, I put in a password for the user and it makes it so I can use sudo, which I personally find an easier and better way to do it. Um, continuing, pick your time zone. And then it should do the um, partitioner. And this guy, I have a dedicated um, boot drive, which is a 16 gigabyte SSD. Um, you can use one of your storage drives, but um, that's what I prefer to do here. It's going to be the Kingston drive here. And it's going to complain that it's too small, so I'm going to have to do it manually. Normally, the automatic partitioning should be used. But um, in this case, it doesn't want to work with such a small drive. I generally recommend a bigger drive, but I just happen to have a 16 gig SSD laying around for this project. Now, looking at software installation, um, you don't need a GUI here for it. We won't be using it. Print servers, just cups, don't need it. SSH is a nice, easy way to manage it. This is Apache. You can make your own thing, but you don't need it here. Standard system utilities are always nice to have. And because of it such being a, such a lightweight system, it's going to install very quickly. And then the next thing it's going to ask you to do is, do you want to install um, Grub to the hard drive? Say whatever hard drive you want. Should be something like SDA on it, and then you'll be ready to go and boot from it. So my setup for the video is sitting here. Um, it's kind of an open test bench. You can put in a case as well. A few things to know. Make sure these don't fall over. It's really bad for the drives. I'm not doing that well here. A simple thing to have wood to hold the drives for an open setup would be quite a bit better. Make sure you have airflow, that's why I have this fan here. Drives do get hot, and they can get to 60 some Celsius, which will hurt lifespan a bit. And you shouldn't really just stack them densely in stacks, so having them kind of open for airflow is a good idea. Other than that, this system's ready to be logged into via SSH. In order to do so, you can either find the IP on the host system by logging in and typing um, IP space ADDR, 
or I know the IP of the system, or you can look on your router for DHCP assignments. So let's go looking at how to set this up now. So I'm now SSH'd into the system using SSH and Linux. You can just go um, SSH and then the command line. Here, if you want to use a simple, um, PuTTY works great. Bitvise has a good SSH client that all work in Linux. So the first thing you can do is a sudo apt update. This is going to update all the files on the system. This is going to actually update the repositories, which is the list of software. Then we'll do a sudo apt upgrade. Now this one doesn't have any files to upgrade, but it would upgrade any files if it does. When you install it, it downloads the latest from the internet, but it's always a good practice to do this every once in a while. Um, next thing you want to do is install all the software you need. So I'm going to do sudo apt install. I found ATOP is good for monitoring systems. Tmux, I like working with, it makes it just easier to manage. Um, NFS server is a good for NFS. Samba lets you um, do window shares if you want that. And then we're going to need Fuse for um, MojoFS. And then we're going to need GCC to compile it. And then we're going to also need um, Make. So we're going to run this, and it's going to tell us how much it needs to install. It'll take a minute or two, depending on how fast your internet and system is. Having an SSD and fast internet definitely helps you. And then I personally enter Tmux. Tmux lets me do something like opening a window, I think creating a new one. But really, that's pretty advanced. You can do it all without this. So now let's look at a few basic things. So LSBOK is going to list all of our drives. So looking at them, we see these four are our data drives. And this one's our biggest, so we want this to be our parity drive. The parity drive has to be the biggest drive in your array. You can have more than one, but for a small array like this, one's fine. SDE is your boot drive, you don't want to touch it. So now let's make some partitions. So we're going to do sudo um, gdisk, which is I'll let you format with gpt, which is what I'd recommend now. I did slash dev slash sda. And now it's going to ask you a password. And then it's going to do o to create a new partition table. This will delete everything on it. And then in for a new one, and you want defaults here. And then write, we'll write this to the drive. And now it's been written. And then let's do that for the rest of the drives. So now if we run LSB OK, we can see all these drives have a single partition. That is generally the recommended way to set it up. So now inside the partition, we want to make a file system. So sudo to run it as admin, um, mkfs, which means file system.ext4, which is a type of file system. There's a lot of different types. ext4 is just a good general purpose file system in Linux. And then we're going to just do the partition name, so slash dev slash sda1. And you want to make sure it has one, not the actual drive. And it might say something if it has it, but this drive has been used before. You want to say yes, it will delete all data though. And you want to do that for the rest of the drives as well. Now that we have file systems on all the drives, we need to make mount points. So we're going to go cd slash mmp. And it likes making it just calling it disk. So we're just going to say... Um, sudo mk a the slash mnt slash disk one and we're just going to do this for three disks we have now and then we're going to need one called parity and we're just going to make one now called pool for the mojo fs pool so now if we do ls we can see all of these if you don't want to require permissions you can do sudo chung dash r your username and dot, and this is going to give you permission so you don't have to use sudo for any of these drives. You also have to do it when you mount it, because when you mount it, it follows the permissions. Now let's get into mounting. So during boot up, Linux manages mounting with something called fstab. So we want to edit fstab here. Um, so this is what comes by default in Debian here. You actually have to open it as sudo, because this is a root file. Um, but what it tells it to do is on boot up, it reads this file and it looks at what's in here. So basically, you see UUID, which is the ID of the drive, the, um, the location where you want it mounted, the file system type, any mount options, and what types of checking it should do during boot up. So in order to find UUID, you do sudo on BOKID, and this is to tell you the UUID of all your drives. You can use stuff like SDA, but that changes on boot up, actually, so you really shouldn't do that. So, how I normally do this is you select and copy and paste. Copy and paste can be challenging because Control c is quit by default um, here. And then we're going to do e um, slash disk slash, um, slash mmt 
that's disk one. ext4 is the file type. Um, we're going to say no um, fail as a boot option, which means if this drive isn't here, it's not going to keep you from booting, which is good, what I'd say, especially with older drives that like to have issues. And then we need to do this for our three data drifts and our parity drive. And the last thing we want to do in FSTAB is mount MojoFS. So we're going to do slash mnt slash disk, and then we're just going to use star, which means everything of disks is going to be mounted here. And we're going to want the mount location, so we're going to do slash mnt slash pool. File system type is fuse.mojo.fs. Fuse is just how Linux is managing it. Um, here, and then for mount options, there's going to be a bit more. So, and these are the recommended basic options for mojo.fs. So now if we exit this, we can do sudo mount-a, which will do an automatic mount. df-h shows everything's mounted, and we see our pool is here. You can start using this pool immediately, but it's recommended that I go set up SnapRaid now. So setting up SnapRaid can be a bit more complicated, but the first thing you have to do is go download it from the website. So if we go to SnapRaid's site, we can just click download, and we want to download this tire.gz file, copy the link location, and then we're going to open this, and I'm going to do wget and paste the link location. This is going to take a second or two, but it's going to download. tar-xf, and then the file name is going to uncompress it, so then we can cd into this directory here. And there's a ton of weird looking files and you can't run it and it's like, what? It's actually pretty simple. So first thing is .autogen.sh and then you're going to just run dot slash configure which is going to take a second and make sure your system is ready to do it. And then you can just do um, make and this is actually going to compile your program um, for you, depending on the speed of your system, this is going to take a minute or two, but SnapRaid's pretty small. And then we're going to do sudo um, make install, which is going to copy it in here, so now you can just use SnapRaid like this. If we use it right now, if we want to run something like sync, we notice, uh-oh, there's some issue. Um, it's going to complain that there isn't a sync file. So what you have to do is if you do ls, there's going to be this... Um, there's going to be a conf.example file. So we're going to want to do a sudo cp snapraid.conf.example to slash etc slash snapraid.conf. That's going to copy the file over. So now if we do sudo vim slash etc slash snapraid.conf, we get to see the configuration file. So here's what it is. Content files lists all the data on the drive. You need to have at least one copy for every parity drive, and more is better, because if you lose all of these, you lost everything. So I'd probably do another one here, and we're going to do this one on slash mnt slash disk 3 slash snap array dot content. And then we're going to use data here. Then it just use all the data drives here, slash dev, and does it automatically for you. These are all the files that it won't include. If you don't want it to include certain files, put it here. And pretty much everything else. You can leave default, the smut control if you have different types of controllers, but the default works fine. Everything else. So now if we run um, snapray sync, it'll work correctly. Actually, it won't, because because of permissions, but, and you also, one thing you have to set up is your parity file. This one says disks p, snapright.parity, that's wrong, we're just using slash mount slash parity. So, now if we run snapright sync, it's going to say permission denied, so we're going to do sudo shown dash r brandon slash mnt. That's going to change it, so now snapright sync works fine. And because there's no files, this is going to be very quick. So let's go put a few files on here, look at the performance, and see how it goes copying files. So now looking at it, we can see it's ran a sync, so oh, the data's in there, it's correctly synced to the thing, shows you the last day since the scrub of sync, everything's good. So the next demonstration we're going to do is show adding a hard drive. So currently we have four hard drives and one is a parity, and I'm going to plug in a fifth one right now. Okay, so looking at it now, we can see SDF down here is my new drive. So now we're going to do the same thing we did with the other drive. So sudo um, gdisk slash dev slash sdf. 
password again, new partition table, new partition, writing it to the drive, and then now we're going to make the file system on the drive. Here the drive has been added here, slash dev slash sdf. Up here we're going to go select the UUID again. We're going to copy and paste it into fstab just like we did before. And then we're going to do mnt slash disk4 ext4 no fail 0 comma 0 comma 0. Now what we're going to do is we're going to have to mount this. So in order to mount we have to make a mount directory so sudo slash mnt slash disk4. So now if we run sudo um, mount it's going to say hey slash pool is already mounted. So if we do mount dash a, it's going to say that. We can use the non-empty option, and that's going to remount it again. And I guess it does work, but it mounts it a ton of times. You can auto unmount it before you do, but you're going to notice it's in use. And that's going to be because of NSF, or NFS. So what you should do is you do sudo system control CTO um, stop NFS server and then you can go unmount and it's still complaining because we're in that directory so now it's going to be unmounted and we're going to do sudo mount dash a so now we can go sudo system control start nfs server now if we run df dash h we can see the pool has gotten bigger and no data is currently used on this disk and it's part of the pool data will get used to it now we have to edit snapper. So I'm going to sudo vim slash etc slash snapper.conf. And you can add another content file. You don't really need to. You should add another data. You need to do this for your fourth data drive. Slash mnt slash disk4 slash. So now for runs, um, now the other thing we have to do is permission. So we're going to do sudo shown dash r brandon mnt slash disk4. So now I'm the owner. So now we can do snap raid sync again. And I haven't changed too much, so the sync should be pretty quick. It only syncs what it needs to sync. And now I have more space. So now we've run a, um, so now we've run a um, sync and all the data is here. And if we update it, we can see the pool is working correctly. Now one more function snap raid has. You have to run this as sudo though, due to how it's using it. We can run snap raid um, smart. And it'll tell us the smart status of all the drives in the array. And it's going to say, oh, that's bad. This drive's hot. It's not doing too well. It's the disk 4. But I just added that one, so I want to keep it. But this guy here has a lot of errors and isn't doing too well. And this is disk 1, which is most of the way full. And it's my old 80 gigabyte drive. So we're going to go take it out and replace it and simulate a failure. So we're going to go just unplug this drive and simulate a failure. And oops, we just unplugged it. So now if we run df-h, it kind of sees it. If we cd slash mt slash disk1 ls, uh-oh, that's an input error, output error, that's bad. So due to its, due to how we mounted it, we can reboot it without issues, and it'll mostly be fine. But what I'd probably do is, A, go to sudo m slash edc slash fstab. Um... and edit fstab. So now this is disk1. So we're just going to go comment this out. And that tells the system, don't listen to this. So it's not going to mount it at boot up now. And a reboot here is not a bad idea just because it thinks some stuff's mounted and it's really not. So that's what I'm going to do now. Reboot. So now the system's working fine, but the pool is a lot smaller. It works fine, but the pool's small, and it doesn't like that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to replace the drive. So I happen to have this 500 gig drive that I'm going to replace it with. And while there is ways to remove it, we'll go show that in a little bit. Well, for this test, we're just going to replace it. So now to run LSB OK, we can see that we have another drive here, which we're going to go set up and mount. So we're going to go and see, you know, kfs.ext4 slash dev slash sdf1. This drive happens to already be formatted. We're going to have to redo it. And, um, and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to be editing fstab. 
drive that we removed. So we're going to delete all this UUID data and replace it for disk 1. So now that it's done, we're going to do sudo bokid again, and we can see slash sdf is the new drive, so we're going to just do copy, and then we're going to just paste it in here. Now we're going to go and run um, sudo umount slash mt slash pool, just to make sure the pool gets unmounted, and then we're going to do sudo mount a. So now the f h shows that disk 1 is now mounted, but it's almost empty. We don't want that. We want to fix this, so we're going to need to run, um, first thing is just permissions, so we're going to do sudo trim dash r brandon slash nt slash disk 1. And then we're going to have to fix this. So when fixing, you shouldn't touch any data because of how the parity works and stuff. And then now we're going to run um, snap raid dash d and d1. So this has to be the same disk number. If you didn't mount it in the same spot, you have to change it in the snapper config file. Dash l fix.log. You can call it a log file whatever you want. It's going to save it in your current directory, which is on my home folder, which is fine. And then we're going to have to do fix. So now it's going to go and fix data using all the drives. So if we go back and look at this, refresh it, we can see all of these drives, there's quite a bit of data being read from all of them, except this one. Now you might think, what if a drive fails in this? And if a drive fails here, you lose all your data, or you lose whatever data it can't fix. So that's why you don't want to have multiple parity drives. And when you should have multiple parity drives, it basically all depends on how much you value your um, data and the chance of failure. If you're using drives that are very likely to fail, you should probably have that. If you just see it as a, I don't care about the data too much, and these drives should be reliable, maybe even SSDs, don't worry about it. You can have up to six parity drives of SnapRaid. And now, as you can see, we recovered all the data. We've accessed a lot of it. Every single error has been recovered. So now if you run df-h, you can see disk one has 56 gigs again, and the pool is up to full size. So one thing you might want to do to make this a bit easier is scripting it. So we're going to do sudo we're going to just run bin, no need for sudo, snap raid.sh. And we might want to do like a snap raid sync, and then we're going to run a snap raid scrub. Scrub smart only scrubs a little bit of the data. And then we can do change mod plus x snap raid.sh. So now if we run dot slash snap raid.sh, it's going to run a little bit here. So it's going to um, look at it, and it's going to run a very quick scrub and stuff. And since not much data has been moved and it hasn't been sitting very long, it won't do that. But this becomes a bit more useful when we're going to do crontab-e. And this, is, this is manages what Linux will automatically do. So actually, there's a snap rate example in here from last time. But what we're going to want to do is 0 is the minute. So it's going to, you can have it go first, second, third, you can have orders, it can do some pretty complicated things. 2 is going to mean 2 a.m. So it's going to run this thing at 2 a.m. If I wanted to, I could run like comma 5, and I run it also. Um, star means every hour, um, that means every day, every day of the week, and every month of the year. And then we're going to do on the file, so it's going to be slash home slash brandon slash snap raid.sh. So now if we could run crontab l, this is just going to list it. And we can see it's going to run this script at 2 a.m. every day. So I'm probably not using my server at 2 a.m., so it's not going to be under any use. And it's going to run a scrub and a sync every day. So that's probably good things to do. One more thing that you might want to do is remove a drive. And I've been looking around. MergeFS does not have a native remove drive option, so you can't really do that. And the best thing I can think of if I want to do a remove is we can see that the pool has quite a bit of data available now, and there's enough to remove disk 1. And uh, this is probably not suggested, but if I do a sudo umount, slash mt slash pool to remove the pool. It's going to say it's busy, probably because um, NFS service is running, so we're going to stop that. So now we've unmounted the pool, and then we're going to run sudo u mount slash mt slash disk1. Now the way this is going to do it 
is it is going to make it so that you aren't protected with snap raid for a short period of time until you run rerun a sync. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna run do sudo nk do slash mmt do slash mmt slash temp and then we're gonna go vim vim slash etc slash xfab. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna move this disks one mount point from disk one to temp. And what this will do, um, is it's gonna remove it from the pool. Now you notice the pool just got smaller. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do um, cd slash mmt slash temp ls. And it's like this data all belongs in the pool. So we're gonna run an rsync, because snapware.content we don't really care about. Lost and found, but we're gonna run rsync avr p, so archive copies all the data about it. Verbose just tells you everything the cursor does folders, you don't need it because it's into archive. Dot, which is everything here, slash mnt slash pool. Don't want this backslash. Um, rsync's not installed, sudo apt install rsync. Rsync's always nice to have around. And then now rsync is here. So now what we're doing is we're copying data from this test drive back to it. So now if we dc slash mnt slash pool, we're going to notice that if we go to test here, there's a lot of Linux files here, we can see things like over live is now being copied over from here. So now it just finished one copy, so we can see it's gone here. And this is one way to remove it. Now the big note is this removes your snap rate protection for a temporary basis. And also you're going to have to do pseudo vim slash etc slash snap dot com and remove this disk from your data pool. So now you're completely unprotected with snap raid. So when you're done with this move, you're going to have to do it. So I'd make sure your backups are good or you're okay losing the data during this process when it's removing it, but you can remove a drive from the array this way. So this should have covered all the basics of SnapRate on Linux. It's a pretty good archiving or media solution. Speed-wise, is not great. Um, there's a bit of tweaking you can do with MojoFS, and these older drives aren't great, but the big thing is you're writing to one drive at a time mostly, and hard drives aren't the fastest. But if you're using it for something like playing media backups, it's more than enough. And hey, stay tuned for more videos. I'm going to do more NAS and hard drive and storage videos in the future.